Hi, this is Richard Hicks, founder and principal consultant at Richard M. Hicks Consulting, where we specialize in enterprise mobility and security infrastructure. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to implement a Windows 10 always-on VPN user tunnel using Microsoft Intune. But before we get to the task of deploying the VPN connection using Intune, we first need to prepare our infrastructure, meaning we need to install and configure our VPN servers, prepare all of our authentication infrastructure, PKI, NPS, and so forth. Next, we'll create a test connection using a test client, and we'll validate that the VPN connection works and that all of our authentication is functioning properly. Once we've done that, we will extract the EAP configuration from the test profile. We'll do that using a PowerShell script, getEAPConfiguration.ps1, which can be downloaded from my GitHub at github.com slash richardhicks slash AOVPN. To deploy a Windows 10 always-on VPN user tunnel using Microsoft Intune, open the Microsoft Intune Management Console, click on Device Configuration, click on Profiles, and then click Create Profile. Provide a name, enter a description if you like, and then select Windows 10 and later as the platform. For the profile type, there's two different ways to do this. Now, we can choose a VPN connection or we can choose a custom, and there's a couple of different scenarios in which you would choose those. So let's walk through the VPN configuration. So we choose VPN for the profile type, and you'll see that this window flies out, and we now have a number of options to define. So let's click Base VPN, and here's where you're going to provide things like the connection name. We'll provide the VPN servers. We'll select whether or not this is the default server. Click Add. And of course, we have other options here, like registering with the internal DNS and selecting the connection type. Now, for the connection type, we have a variety of options here. You'll see that there are a number of third-party VPN plugin providers that are supported, as well as the native VPN clients in Windows 10. I'm going to go ahead and select Automatic. That's probably the most basic and simple deployment. And basically what that means is that it will choose between either Ike v2 or SSTP VPN protocols. We'll select, of course, Always On. And we'll, of course, remember our credentials. And then finally, we'll choose a certificate to use for authentication. Finally, it's asking for something called our EAP XML. And you'll see, interestingly enough here, there's nowhere to upload a file. So we'll have to paste this here. Now, the EAP configuration file is fairly complex. And if we were to create this by hand, it would be very tedious, time-consuming, and error-prone. So the best way to do this is to create a VPN connection and then extract the EAP configuration contents in XML format. So if we look at a VPN connection here, we'll choose uh, Change Adapter Options, right-click on the connection, choose Properties. If we go to Security, everything in the EAP configuration here listed under Properties is contained in an XML file. So this is why it's important to create this test connection ahead of time, validate that everything is functioning, and then we will simply extract the EAP configuration using a PowerShell script. You can find that PowerShell script on my GitHub at github.com slash richardhicks slash AOVPN. So to extract our EAP configuration, we just simply run the PowerShell script that we downloaded, and it takes one parameter, and that is the connection name, and then it will output that as a text file on the desktop. Now what we'll do is we'll just collect that information, and we'll just pipe that to the clipboard, and now we can paste that information into this window here. So we'll click OK. Of course, we have a variety of other settings, optional settings, that we can choose as well. For example, you could define application and traffic rules. So always on VPN supports integration with Windows Information Protection. So if you wanted to do that, you could do so here. You could also create network traffic rules. So we do have the ability to restrict access by source destination and protocol port, a variety of things like that. We can add those here as well. 
Windows 10 Always On VPN does support conditional access, so if you wanted to take advantage of those capabilities, uh, those obviously require Azure AD integration, you can do so here. Some optional but rather important settings here are our DNS settings. It's uh, crucial to provide a DNS suffix for the internal domain so that the client knows how to route DNS name resolution queries. In addition, you can define name resolution policy table entries or rules. Now, the NRPT, if you've worked with direct access, you might be familiar with it. The NRPT provides policy-based name resolution request routing, and it was crucial for direct access because direct access functioned by dividing the internal and external networks by namespace. That's not the case with always on VPN, so this is really an optional configuration. The NRPT is really important for always on VPN if you are using split DNS and you want to create or define rules that route some traffic over the tunnel and other traffic outside of the tunnel, like public facing web servers, mail servers, Skype for Business, or things like that. You can also define proxy server settings if you want your clients to use a proxy server. And then finally, we do have the option to enable or disable split tunneling. So if you do enable split tunneling, you then have the ability to define routes. So you can define what traffic goes over the tunnel and what does not. The last setting here is trusted network detection. Trusted network detection is used by always on VPN clients to identify the internal network. So in this case, if we enable trusted network detection, the always on VPN client will not automatically establish a VPN connection when it's on the internal network. Unlike direct access where trusted network detection was performed using the network location server or NLS, that doesn't exist in always on VPN. With always on VPN, the client simply identifies a given or a defined DNS suffix, and if that DNS suffix is present on another network adapter, then the client understands that it's on the internal network and it won't start the connection. So that's about it. So we'll click OK. And so we've configured all of our settings. So we'll go ahead and click Create. And the profile has been created, and now all we need to do is go click on Assignments and then assign this to a specific group. So that's how you would go about deploying a Windows 10 always-on VPN profile using Microsoft Intune and using the native Intune user interface to make all of the configuration settings changes. Now, there are times when you may want to or may have to deploy always on VPN using custom settings. The most common deployment scenario is when you're going to use Ike v2 for your VPN protocol and you want to use custom cryptographic or cryptography settings for the connection. The default security settings for Ike v2 are rather poor and so this is probably a really good idea to do. For more information you can click on the link on your screen there and you can find more details about that. There are a couple of other scenarios in which you might want to consider using a custom configuration. In addition to using custom cryptography settings for Ike v2, if you need to deploy exclusion routes or you want to do some custom configuration settings using third-party plugin providers, those are probably better handled or better performed using custom XML. So in this case, what we will do is we will create our XML file, our profile XML, and of course, that will look something like this. You can find sample XML files uh, that I've posted on my GitHub. You can take a look at those and see if they work for you. But fundamentally, this is everything that the Intune UI does for you behind the scenes. And so here what we've done is we've created the profile XML, input all of our parameters, and specifically if we scroll down here, you will see that we are using custom cryptography settings for Ike v2. And again, these are not exposed anywhere in the Intune UI, at least today. So in that case, we'll have to upload our XML file accordingly. So to do this, when we create a profile, we'll provide the name, uh, add a description, select Windows 10 and later for the platform, but this time instead of choosing VPN, we will choose Custom. Here we'll provide our OMA URI, 
and for that we'll provide it a name. Uh, you can enter a description if you like. And then we'll enter the OMA URI using the following syntax. Dot slash user slash vendor slash MSFT slash VPN V2 slash connection name slash profile XML. If there are any spaces in the name, those need to be escaped using percent %20 as shown here. In addition, don't forget to include the leading dot. So that is specifically dot slash user. For the data type, select string XML. And then let's click the folder and select our profile XML file. Click OK. And click OK once more. And then click Create. Finally, click Assignments. Click Assignments once more, and select a group to assign the settings to. So there you have it. Deploying a Windows 10 Always On VPN user profile using Microsoft Intune using either the native UI or Custom Profile XML. If you'd like to learn more about Always On VPN as well as other mobility and security solutions, visit my website at directaccess.richardhicks.com.